Praise God. Glory to Dios. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you want to be a part of our ministry in the ventures, the things we're doing, great things for God to bring the good news. If you want to be part of this ministry, go to my website and hablalos in the name of Jesus Christ. Dios le bendiga. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. Today is the day that the Lord has made. You see that book in the back? With a donkey, praise the Lord. We just got through finishing about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Later on, we're going to be having, there's the book ready. You could go to my website and you could order it. It's on Amazon. Also, my testimony, www.mfministries.net. You could order my book or order my DVD. We're also going to be, it's exciting. We're going to be do, putting uh, CDs, six C DVDs together as a series on the gifts of the Holy Ghost to go right along with the book. So be ready about that. I'm excited. We're going to be able to get that ready for people to order it. Praise God. It's going to be six DVDs, uh, intense teaching on the gifts of the Holy Ghost, how you could be used of God. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. And don't forget those who want to be a part of our ministry and helping us. We're looking for people to donate clothes or uh, food to help the homeless. We're involved with Fish and Bread. We're gathering here in Houston uh, to help and donate clothes to the homeless and food. Every Thursday they feed the homeless. I'm involved in that. Praise God. So if you want to get involved in that, please call us and praise God. Everything, anything you can help with. Okay, today we're going to be talking about the power of the cross. I want us to read in Matthew 61. But we're going to be talking about the power of the cross. What happened at that cross when Jesus died? Okay. Let's read Matthew 26, verse 61. And he said, fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and built it in three days. The people were thinking an actual temple, but it was really talking about the temple that was in the heavens. At that time, before any man was able to come to God, there was an actual temple in the Holies of Holies. There was a curtain in the Holies of Holies also here. That temple was destroyed in three days, and it was restored. The new temple is this temple right here. When Jesus died on that cross, there was power of the cross. That power of his death and resurrection destroyed that temple. He literally ripped the curtain from top to bottom so that you and I could go into the holies of holies. The people in the time of the temple, when they used to offer sacrifices, the priests had to literally tie a long rope around their leg with a cowbell. Why would they do tie a cowbell, brother? Well, nobody was allowed to go into the holies of holies in the times of the Jewish time, the Old Testament, because at that time, nobody was able to go to God unless they had a priest, high priest, who offered sacrifice for the sins of the people once a year. He was the lambs or, or little birds, uh, but yet no one was able to go behind that curtain. Because you will be struck dead like that. So sometimes God was not pleased with the sacrifices that they submitted to him. And that's why Jesus said here. Let's read it again. I'm going to go on. And he said, this fellow said, they're accusing Jesus. They were getting false witnesses. And they're trying to destroy Jesus and crucify him. And there was an individual who said that Jesus said, I would destroy the temple of God and built it in three days. And built it in three days. See, they were trying to get him and trap him. And they were trying to get false witnesses to accuse him. But what was Jesus really talking about? He was not actually talking about the building per se.
but he was talking about the, the presence of God. No man was able to go in the presence of God. So when the priest go, went and presented a sacrifice, he, they tied a rope in the cowbell. If they hear the cowbell fall, that means the, God, the priest was killed, strike dead from God, and he was not pleased with the sacrifice. So they could not go in there and pull him out. So what did they do? They pulled him out with the rope. So that was the reason Jesus said, I'm going to destroy that concept. I want to destroy all of that. Because guess what? When Jesus died and on the third day he resurrected, he destroyed the temple and he ripped that curtain from top to bottom. That way, you and I do not have to have a priest to burn sacrifices. We do not have to go once a year and present sacrifices to God. Because there's one sacrifice, and that was Jesus. Let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolish. To the world, they don't understand why Jesus died. It was foolish to believe that that is only through Jesus. Let me tell you, if it weren't for Jesus, that temple would still be going on the sacrifices. No man would have a relationship with the Father. But Jesus had a vision within his heart to destroy that temple. That in three days he restored it when he was resurrected. The new temple now is not an actual church. Now the temple is this body. The Bible says, don't ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I will destroy it, the physical temple. And he will restore it in three days. And that temple is when Jesus died. People say it's foolish to believe on the crucifixion of Jesus. But were for that cross and his resurrection, we wouldn't been able to have this new temple of where God resides in. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. If we only could realize, brothers, that this temple has God now. You have the Father. And if you have not received Jesus, there's power at the cross. Hallelujah. That was the reason why Jesus knew that he had to die and sacrifice himself. Because he was the lamb sacrificed before the world. He was the one who was going to draw man back to God. The Bible said in Genesis, he says, Genesis 3.15, I want us to go to it. In Genesis 3.15, it says here, Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It says here, When Adam committed that impartable sin of eating the forbidden fruit, he separated us from God's grace and God's goodness and mercy by he eating the forbidden fruit. He ushered us into the kingdom of darkness. We'll see that later on. But let's read here. God in his heart, this is what God said. He told the serpent, and God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this in Genesis 3, 14. He said, God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly should thou go, and thus shall thou Eat all the days of thy life. Apparently the snakes used to be able to stand up and walk this way. But he said, for this day you will crawl on your belly. But listen to what he's told Satan. Listen to it. Verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. In other words, she was prophesying and predicting that one day 
there will be someone, the Son of God, who will destroy you. He will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. Satan, the day is going to come that someone, which is my son, he's going to come and defeat you at the cross. So when Jesus said, when he said that in Matthew, when he said that in Matthew, let's read it again. Oh, it's exciting to know that God had a plan. He had a plan that for us to come back to him. He had a plan. Satan just destroyed us and defeated us. He de destroyed the human race, but Jesus brought us back. He said, and he said, I will destroy the temple of God and built it in three days. Hallelujah. That temple now is us. We are the temple of God. Hallelujah. That's the reason why there is the power of the cross. It is foolishness to those who don't believe. But for those who are saved, it is the power of God. Let's read in Corinthians again. Let's read it. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Hallelujah. That is telling me, brother, hallelujah. We no longer, when Jesus died on the cross, he literally destroyed that temple. He ripped that temple up. And that curtain came down. It was ripped from top to bottom. They said that curtain was thick, about 13 inches thick. But it came down and it was ripped down. Hallelujah. That way that you and I could come into the holies of holies, washed with the precious blood of the Lamb. He said, I will put my laws in that heart. He said, I will dwell in you and you will dwell in me me. God said that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. There is power in that cross. I don't care what addiction or perversion or what sin you've committed. If you call upon the name of Jesus he's able to set you free. There's power in that cross when he tied on that cross and he resurrected Erected. He destroyed that temple. That way you could go into the holies of holies and begin to cry, Abba, Father, Hallelujah, Rabba, Sandala, Rabba, Syria. You're able to go in the presence of God and to talk to God as your Father, Abba, Father, because He will put your sin as far as the east is from the west. I don't care what addiction. I don't care what mistake you've done. There's power in that cross. Hallelujah. Glory to my God in the name of Jesus. All you need to do is call upon the name of Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus and he will set you free. Oh, that's why he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall the principalities of power, but nothing, nor height, nor death, shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Oh, praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of people, a lot of religions, they're trying to bring another gospel. There's only one gospel. is the gospel of the cross. The gospel of the cross. That is about Jesus. It's through Jesus. The Bible said there's no other name but the name of Jesus. That whosoever call upon his name shall be saved. And there's no other name under heaven and earth that you could be saved. To this day, Buddha has his tomb and his body is still there. Muhammad's body is still there. Hare Krishna's body is still there. But my Jesus' tomb, he resurrected on the third day. Hallelujah. He's no longer in that tomb. He was resurrected and sits at the right hand of the Father. Praise me to God that we have our Father, that we could call upon the name of Jesus and he will save you. Those are heavy laden and burdened. If you out 
they're listening. I don't care if you're a drug addict. I don't care if you're a five-time loser in prison. I don't care if whatever you did. All you need to do, God said he so loved the world. He so loved the world. That's why he died on that cross that you and I could be set free. Praise you, God, in Jesus' name. I know a lot of people don't like to accept the idea there must be other ways to heaven. No, the Bible says there's only one way to the Father. It is by Jesus that name is Jesus, and through the cross and the resurrection, and it says again, and the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolish. They say, why you waste your time on the religion, old-fashioned religion, that's antique religion. Why don't you get the modern religion, the, the new religions they have today? No, there's only one way, the old rugged cross. Hallelujah, that old rugged cross. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. Oh, the mercy of God that he set us free. That mercy of God that he reached down. Oh, thank you, Jesus, is through the cross of Jesus Christ and forgave me as I forgive others. Oh, may God forgive us and allow him to come in our heart. Just say, Jesus, come in my heart and be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sins and I receive that old-fashioned cross. I stick to that cross, praise God, because it's the power. It says to this, and again it says, the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolish. Oh, they said it's foolish. Why do you make up right? Why do you want to shake the boat? Why don't you compromise and mix Muhammad and the Muslim religion with the Christian religion? We all believe in the same God. No, brother. <laughs> we don't believe in the same God. We believe in Jesus, the Father, Son, Jehovah Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. And it's through the virgin birth that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin Mary, born of a virgin. And through him, we have our salvation. And it's through him that whosoever call upon his name shall be saved. You brother, you're narrow-minded. You, you, you got to accept these other religions. They, 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 they help the needy. They help the poor. Yes, they might mean well, but there's only one way to heaven. I don't care if they give their bodies to be burned or they give millions to the poor and help the hungry. That doesn't save you. What saves you is the cross. What saves you is the cross, is what Jesus did when you call upon his name. When Jesus is the one who sets you free. It is Jesus that sets you free. He's the only one who was willing to die and willing to die for us. I want us to read Philippians chapter 2. Praise God. Glory to the God. Listen to this. Glory to God. This is it. Verse 2. Chapter 2, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, who was in the form of God, not thought it robbery to be equal with God. But listen to what I want to share with you. Verse 7. But made of himself of no reputation, and took upon himself a form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. He was 100% God, and a hundred percent man. He listened to what he said. And made of himself of no reputation. When Jesus came to this earth. He came into a manger. When Jesus came to this earth. He came to a cross. And died and resurrected the third day. Oh but the good news. When Jesus come back again, he will come on a white horse. 
Oh, with his crown full of glory. And he will call upon the names of the saint. Come up hither, come up hither. Oh, for I built many mansions for his children. Oh, brothers and sisters, praise God. When he came to the earth the first time, he became a servant to the people. Hallelujah. But this time, we're going to be his servants and his sons to be obedient to him and give him glory. Praise God. Listen to this. It is verse 7, chapter 2, verse 15. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Jesus made of himself a no reputation. He took upon himself a form of a servant. And it was made in the likeness of man, being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And therefore God also had a highly exalted him, and gave him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, listen to this, at the name of Jesus, every knee, that includes me, every knee shall bow, and the things in heaven and the things in earth, things under earth, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. It showed that there is the power of the cross. Jesus came to reconcile us back unto the Father. He told Satan, I will put enmity in between the woman and the seed. And he will bring back the human race to God. Hallelujah. I want us to read Romans 4. Hallelujah. Let's read Romans 4. I mean 5, 12, I'm sorry. It says, listen to this. Romans, Romans 5, 12. Therefore, by one man's sin entered to the world, then death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Until the law was in the world, sin did not impure. There is no law. Listen to this. Let's go here. Listen to this. Verse 15. But not as offense, so also the free gift. For if the offense of one meaning be dead, much more the grace of God's the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abound unto many. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 17. For by one man's offense, death. Because of Adam, there was death. And reigned by one. But much more, listen to this, but much greater, but much more, which is abound, which is abound in grace. The gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. That was verse 17, chapter 5, Romans. That is saying is through Christ Jesus. We have been restored to the Father. Now we could call him Father. Abba, Father, because His Spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are sons of God, that whosoever call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. I'm telling you, brother, I don't care what problem you have. If you call upon the name of Jesus, thou shall be saved. I don't care if you're bound with addictions or homosexuality, prostitute. I don't care. God loves you. He's able to set you free, just like he set me free from homosexuality. He delivered me, set me free, washed me with the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to my God in the name of Jesus. The Bible said that whosoever call upon the name of Jesus, thou shall be saved. Hallelujah. Remember the scripture we base this on, the power of the cross. It is power to them, listen to this, but unto us which are saved. It is the power of God. The cross is the power of Christ. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Right now, if you have not accepted Jesus, and you're listening to me right now, you made the wrong mistakes. You've been to prison three or four times. You made all kinds of mistakes. You divorced three or four times. I don't care. There ain't no sin that God can't forgive. He already forgave you. 
Just call upon the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I receive your forgiveness of my sin. Come in my heart, Jesus, and be the Lord of my life. Cleanse me with thy precious blood. I believe, Jesus. I believe that you're the Son of God and that God has raised you from the dead. And I confess Jesus is my Lord. And begin to say, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Come in my heart and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And renounce all your sins. It's just I reject it. I want nothing to do with it. In Jesus' name. And say to the Father, fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Fill me with the baptism of fire, speaking in tongues. Baptize me, God. Just reach out to God right now. And just reach out and say, baptize me with the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer... Write me or call me and tell us what has blessed you in Jesus' name. And remember this, Jesus loves you. And if you're sick right now, I don't care if you have leukemia or cancer. I don't care what kind of disease. Three years ago, I was three years and a half, almost four years, I was dying. They said they had no cure. It was called the Evans Syndrome. It's an autoimmune system. And let me tell you, my blood was so thin, it was like water. It was coming out of my hand, nails. If I put my hands in the water, blood would come out from under my nails. And the, it did, the doctor said there was no cure. There was no help. And I was dying in the hospital. I was in the hospital for two or three months. And they were giving me chemo therapy, and none of it helped. But God, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank God for the doctors. Praise the Lord. They did their part and God did his greatest part. See, all is asking you, just believe. Just put your hands on your body right now. Right now, say, I rebuke that cancer. Or I rebuke that disease in the name of Jesus. You lay your hands. You're a child of God. In the name of Jesus, rebuke it in Jesus' name. Command that sickness to be gone in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father, for healing us at the cross in Jesus' name. Remember, write us. We're looking forward to hear from you. And keep us in your prayers, and we'll be praying for you. I don't care what kind of problem you had. Nothing's impossible for him that believe. And remember us next week. We'll be back again. Looking forward to hear from you. And don't forget about my book. Order it on Amazon. Just type Michael Fernandez Ministries. You'll be able to see my book. Also order my DVDs. God bless you. Okay. Praise God. Glory a Dios. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you want to be a part of our ministry in the adventures, the things we're doing, great things for God to bring the good news. If you want to be part of this ministry, go to my website and habla los en el nombre de Jesucristo. Dios le bendiga.